On today's episode, new leaked photos of a Cybertruck mega casted frame, Belgium gets a mega pack replacement for a World War II power generator, and Tesla gets the nod to test a virtual power plant in Texas. A surprising new leak has set off a big discussion around the Tesla Cybertruck after a photo of what looks like the exposed frame of the Cybertruck was posted in a video by YouTuber Kim Java on December 9th. Kim reported getting the images from an anonymous source who obviously works in Giga Texas, or at least they did, Tesla's likely not going to be too pleased with this person when they find them. But the image itself is raising a lot of questions. It shows what appears to be an attached cabin and a rear frame of a Cybertruck sitting on a stand under a sign that says powder coat. The cabin is sprayed, poorly, with some kind of coating and easily identifiable as a Cybertruck shape. The slope over the door frames is pretty distinctive. As Kim points out, this cabin could be made of hydroformed stainless steel which is a process that forms hollow parts by pressing them into a mold and forcing water through at pressures up to 3000 bar. But that seems unlikely, or at least overkill for what we're looking at here. And this frame gives us our first big question, what's it even doing there? The Cybertruck has been advertised as having its stainless steel body double as its structure. CEO Elon Musk has gone into a fair amount of detail about using it as an exoskeleton moving the majority of the vehicle's stresses to the skin instead of keeping it to the frame like a regular vehicle would. Now, this doesn't mean there won't have to be any frame pieces to work with. The rear frame of the vehicle being one piece cast has been a known fact since before Tesla got the 9,000 ton gigapress they needed to make it. But industry experts like Sandy Monroe believe Tesla wouldn't have to use an upper body frame at all if they really went with an exoskeleton approach. So we'd expected the casting to be all underbody structure that would hold the motors and suspension. Sandy once said, quote, what the exoskeleton does is to get rid of the requirements for internal longitudinals, stiffening ribs, and things like that because the structural skin would be doing all the work. What you are really doing is getting rid of roof bows, door surrounds, and things like that. And we can very clearly see that this cabin frame at least has door structures and a roof. So the most likely possibility here would be that Tesla has revised their design a bit due to some internal need for structure. But the really intriguing bit of this photo is the rear end, which is claimed to show a single piece mega casted frame according to Kim. This section extends from the back wall of the cabin out over the wheels to the end of the bed. It definitely has the appearance of being one continuous piece with a ton of structural elements built in, and it also appears to be black for some reason. But the whole assembly is a little confusing. The bracing along the top of the wheel well is not something that we were expecting to see at all, and it has such a strange swooping kind of shape to it. Why have that when the Cybertruck's body is supposed to be where all the vehicle's upper support is coming from? And for that matter, why does it look like the rear cast is made of a different material? We know from video of the Model Y being assembled that its aluminum castings come out of the press in a fairly shiny gray state. But this Cybertruck rear cast looks a lot darker, which makes it appear that whatever we are looking at has used a different material than the standard Tesla casting. This could be for testing purposes, as the frame in this image is most likely just for test fitting, so Tesla could have made the frame out of something cheap so they could experiment and iterate. For one, that new 9,000 ton Gigapress machine does not seem to have even arrived at Giga Texas yet. None of the drone flyover guys have reported on any gigantic shipments arriving at the factory. And even if it had, the machine would take months to assemble and calibrate. So. I don't think this came out of a gigapress, or at least not a 9,000 ton gigapress. I wonder if this is even made out of metal at all. Could Tesla be using 3D printing and plastics to create mock-ups of potential Cybertruck frame candidates? Why is it black? Aluminum isn't black. If they are going to have a die casting mold made for such a gigantic metal part, then they obviously want to get that design perfected before the die is cut. Would they do a full build out first in plastic? 
They could be using this as a mock-up to calibrate any number of other production line machines or processes, like something to practice on. Clearly, Tesla is ramping up to get the Cybertruck production line ready to go for next year, so they're up to something here, but it's pretty hard to call this as some kind of a finished product. What this really leaves us wondering about is just how the final design of the Cybertruck is actually coming together. The upper structure of the frame above the wheel wells kind of debunks the old exoskeleton theory. We'd expected that Tesla would use the strength of their much hyped 8 inch thick 300 series cold rolled stainless steel to act as a structural component of the Cybertruck, which would eliminate the need for literally all of this stuff that we are looking at in this photo. So that would actually kind of suck if this is a real Cybertruck. But let us know below, what do you think is going on there? By the way, if you're enjoying the content we create here on the Tesla space and would like to support us, check out our Patreon page. We've got some exclusive perks for our Patreon supporters, and it helps us grow the team and continue producing this content. Tesla Energy products continue their world tour of infrastructure upgrades, this time replacing a legacy turbojet generator in Belgium that had been used since the end of World War II. <coughs> In early December, a new 40 Tesla Megapack system with 50 megawatts of power and a 100 megawatt hour capacity was activated, freeing the Belgian town of Lessine from the noisy, polluting Derzacran power plant that was way past its prime. The newly updated Derzacran is now the largest facility of its type in Europe and will help regulate the frequency of the European grid, which is very interconnected between the many countries across the continent. The main company involved, developer Corsica Sol, already runs plants like this in the French islands in the Mediterranean and has been pushing for this project for years and have announced that the facility at Derzacan is the first of three 100 megawatt hour facilities planned across Belgium. With their partners Uso and Innovent, both of which are energy and engineering firms, as well as Tesla of course, Corsica Sol was able to get this refit done without any public subsidies. This news is very similar to the opening of a Tesla Megapack facility in Hungary back in October 2022. That was a much smaller facility, but the idea to use Megapack substations to stabilize the aging and very heavily interconnected European power network was a similar drive. And when we look back at the Hawaiian facility, which finally replaced the island's last coal plant back in June 2022, we're starting to see a pattern. Tesla Megapack battery farms have been incredibly useful in growing smaller grids and stabilizing others that are often hit by storms and other disasters. But the larger projects we're seeing lately have mostly involved upgrading older infrastructure. It's no secret that countries like the US, Canada, and many countries in Europe all have aging power infrastructure. This case in Belgium is certainly on the extreme end, but replacing things like coal plants is crucial to cleaning up our atmosphere. And with people being skittish over nuclear power, sustainable fusion being decades away at least, and pushback from the fossil fuel industry, stabilizing our grids with megapacks is quickly turning into the best option for keeping the lights on. Now, it might not be a permanent solution, but it does look like Megapack farms will not only help keep the lights on until we find a more efficient power supply, but they'll also help keep us stable even after we do. And it looks like Texas is the next place to get a virtual power plant, as news came in on December 9th that the company had received approval to create a statewide market design pilot for the area. This pilot will likely be similar to the one run in California and Japan last year, with Tesla Powerwall users able to opt into a system that will allow them to help stabilize the larger grid with their own power generation in exchange for some compensation. But from the sound of things, it wasn't easy to get this chance to prove a VPP would work in Texas. Texas's power grid is an open market. Dozens of power companies compete in the state for customers. The grid itself is completely independent of the rest of the country, and that plus the deregulated grid makes it a little difficult for a newer company to squeeze into the market. Luckily, Tesla had a lobbying team in Texas to help get their plan authorized, 
likely taking advantage of the disastrous power grid failures in 2021 to make the point that a more cohesive system would help in extreme weather events. Some of you might remember the winter storm in 2021 that completely overwhelmed Texas's power grid, which mostly runs on natural gas plants. A lot of those competing companies hadn't planned for a grid overload in the typically calm Texas winter, and many people were without power for days in some of the coldest weather they had experienced. So, leaning on the uncertainty that the 2021 debacle put on the Texas grid, Tesla's lobbying team got their foot in the door and got approval to run a demo VPP using 200 participants back in June 2022 which is reportedly what finally got them their authorization to expand to the rest of the state. Tesla's virtual power plants in places like Australia, California, and Japan have already proven to be very robust in extreme weather. The ability for individual users to band together and share power is a very strong tool that legacy power grids just can't do. And some users have already found that the payments from sharing energy during peak events can end up paying enough to cover the monthly cost of the system, which is definitely an upgrade over what Texas has to work with right now. Back in 2021, a user in California's VPP, Mark Gilland, was able to cover his bill during September of that year due to a serious heat wave putting stress on the grid. Extreme weather is something virtual power plants are basically tailor-made to deal with. Considering Tesla has had great success with these systems in other places, it's hard to think they won't find success in Texas, and given how badly their current energy grid handles emergencies, it's likely Texans are looking for a more community-based alternative to keep their homes at the right temperature. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter, so sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.